Hey guys, and welcome back to Scooby-Doo Night of 100 Frights. We have a massive greenhouse right in front of us. It looks a bit run down, and well it is. Everything is run down in this game. It's a mean greenhouse, Scooby. In fact, there's a massive hole right there. Don't worry about the wind, it's just an aesthetic. It's one of the few times we could actually make use of our slippers, and I really should have... Why didn't I bust through those crates? I realise now. Why did I not bust through those crates? There are Scooby Snack. Oh yeah, I know why. It's because I haven't collected the helmet yet. You, know, you get. The I'm so used to having the helmet that it's weird not having it. That's actually where we're going. We're getting the helmet right now. That's why I didn't bust through the crates. I only recorded this two days ago, and I've already forgotten everything that happened in it. I hate these statues so much. These guys are annoying as well. I get past the zombies. So yeah, that's why I didn't bust through these crates. I need to swing on whatever this thing is to get this platform to lower. Ooh, and then this one goes up. There we go. So the plants. I want to know what kind of plants these are. They're able to spit out this. Deadly green fog. That's disgusting. That's the main thing I say. Whoa, barely avoided that zombie. Ah, go, go door, go. That's my biggest annoyance with this game is there is a loading screen for every single area. I mean, in fairness, the loading screens themselves aren't actually that long. It's just there's so many of them. It's like loading into a level in Sonic 06, only the, le only the loading screens are way shorter. But one thing I can forever... Well, I can't c entirely praise, but I can mostly praise this game for is the music. But this game has some really good music, and a lot of it is... There's like two or three tracks that are remixes of the theme from the new Scooby-Doo movies. It's like, Scooby... Scooby doo I love that theme and it, there's like that, that's what's playing now and I think there's like another version of it the other thing though is that it kind of seems a bit weird like you'll go from one section that's got like really creepy music and then all of a sudden you're in the next section and it'll suddenly start going Scooby dooby doo looking for you it's 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 weird Jills and spills on the haunted hills. Every level sort of has like a, a, a rhyme or something similar, so it's kind of I mean, it's a mean greenhouse Scooby was it, but most of them are, which is kind of just like how the episodes were titled. In at least in the Scooby Doo, where are you? I'm not sure about some of the others. This is back when Scooby Doo was very simple, but that unfortunately was its downfall. It's like, people like Scooby Doo, but eventually it just all started becoming very sane. The, the formula became stale. These are what I was talking about before. It's like, it's kind of hard to judge where these things are. It's fine when they're in this position, I, that was just ill timing. But it sometimes can be difficult to tell exactly where the positioning of those branches is. Just like the hooks in Shock on the Dock. The hedges are thorny, they do hurt you as well. Stuff like this. Die, spider. So does Professor Graham just have all of these spooky things? Does he just want the manor to look scary? I can't really find any other reason as to why he would make it all look like this. The enemies can come out of the hedges. So if you want to get the Scooby Snacks, I have to alert the zombie. What's the point of the slippers? It's like the only time it ever actually works. Yeah, why? So did, did Graham, he's an inventor, is he also a biologist? Is he the one who's making these killer plants? It's like, why does Mystic Manor look like this? How do you get around this hedge maze? How do you get around any of this? I mean, stuff like the the pier and the, the docks and everything like that, I can assume that that isn't his. Like, that's its own separate thing. But what's the hedge maze? There, there's a hedge maze. Then you get to some sea cliffs. 
and then you get to a graveyard. Like, what is the process? What is the normal journey to the graveyard? I have to go down there to get to the sea cliffs to get to the graveyard. We can't do that until much later on. But it's like, what is the process behind getting to these places? Right, tiny platforms, a little bit difficult. Double jump is pr something I wouldn't advise. Single jumps. There was a time where I always used in any game I would double jump for everything. I then learned that that isn't always a good thing. It's raining boulders. Right, so you come across spider webs a lot in this game, but we need the helmet to bust through it. Thankfully, the helmet is conveniently lying on top of this hill. Why are all the power-ups in these locations? I don't know. Did the mastermind put them there? How did I just avoid falling in that pit? <laughs> Why did the laugh track play then? I didn't do anything. <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, I guess because there's like a laugh track in the actual cartoon, they decided to implement that here. It's weird. Because especially on the fact that there's only like one laugh track. It's just like one track. They just hear the same kind of laughter over and over again. But I'm not sure what triggers it. Because it's like sometimes it... it does, when it does it in the cutscenes, that's fine. It's when it does it on... It's when it does it just perf performing normal actions. Yeah, you can't go back. Don't know how it leads here, but you can't go back. Anyway, there was a monster token a bit further ahead, which I decided to go for first. But, uh, yeah, I said, like, the laugh track, sometimes it'll do it, like, when you go into your disguise. Like, I think it did it just then. All I did was barge through a gate. It'll sometimes do it when you go into your disguise. It will sometimes do it when you get the umbrella out. I don't know what triggers it, really. I just kind of wish there was more than one kind of track. Like, I don't really know what the point of the laugh track in Scooby-Doo ever was. Because I never, I never took Scooby-Doo as a sitcom. But for some reason, it has a laugh track. I'm not sure what the first series to take it to not use it was. I can't even remember what all the series are. Alright, we can now make our way back into Mystic Manor. The mystery machines are there to save your game. Yeah, I can't remember what came after the Scooby Doo show. Because I remember there was, a, there was all sorts of Scooby Doo cartoons, and they kept trying to change things up because the formula was getting tired. But I cannot remember what they all are. Or it's definitely I don't know what order they were all in. Because I know we had the Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo show. That itself got like a second incarnation called the new Scooby-Doo Mysteries. Not to be confused with the new Scooby-Doo movies. I know we had the 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo. We had a pup named Scooby-Doo, which I never watched, bar a few episodes. And I think that was it before the hiatus. Then he was able to get back into popularity thanks to the, the films. How did I just do that? <laughs> was there a bat there? I don't know how I just did that. Watch out for the Scooby Sacks above the ceiling. But yeah, there was like a hiatus, then we got Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island and a bunch of other films. And then they then they brought like the TV show back with What's New Scooby-Doo, which is a uh, kind of misleading name. It isn't really any different. It's got a great theme song. Other than that, it wasn't really any different to the actual, to the old shows. But, uh... The only real difference... Some of the characters have slightly different personalities. Daphne was a lot more obsessed with fashion. They made Fred a lot stupider. Right. Stupider. I don't even know if that's a word. But, but she's... Uh, uh, oh, God. Jeepers, it's the creeper. Like, Fred seems a lot less intelligent in uh, Scooby. what's new Scooby-Doo. 
Like, he's still smart, he's just not nearly as smart, and he can also bench press 220. As he will make clear many, 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 many times. And of course it was a much more modern show, so they brought in a lot more modern things. This is why I couldn't go very far into Mystic Manor, because you can't get past part two. Because there's spider webs in the way. Right, this this box of snacks right here is a real pain. I am clearly going through the thing. I am very clearly going through the thing. I, I, I swear, there are times where it's like they deliberately made the hitboxes of these things smaller so you can come back and get them again when you have like the bubble gum or the soap bubbles. But I was clearly going through that thing and nothing was happening. So I decided to ignore it, I'll get it later. And what's this Scooby Doo is kind of like the last bit of Scooby Doo that I watched. Mainly just, it was just the one that followed, which I think was Shaggy and Scooby Doo Guess a Clue. I was like, when I first saw it, I was like, what is this? This is, this is not Scooby Doo. This is hideous. It's like, what is with these designs? And it has like a single main villain who isn't a monster. I was so confused and I really didn't like the appearance of the characters. And I hadn't even seen what the rest of the gang looked like. Eventually I did and I was like, oh my. So yeah, I did uh, I did not watch Shaggy and Scooby-Doo get a clue. And that would kind of stayed that way. I then, because then it became a Scooby Doo Mystery Inc., which I do hear really good things about. I do. It's just when the series first started, it was again. I was like, these designs are freaking ugly. So like, why are the characters so jaggy in everything and appearance? Like Shaggy and Scooby don't look so bad, but the rest of the gang. Firstly, their eye, Daphne's eyes are like purple circles. It's like what? What am I looking at? Her eyes are purple circles, her breasts are triangular. I did not like the designs of the characters. Fred and the, the personalities, it's like... Fred is now obsessed with traps. It's like, I get... I couldn't work out for starters if the series actually had a canon or not. Because it's like they acknowledged monsters they caught in their previous adventures. But they also weren't Mystery Inc. Like, that was the name of another group that disappeared. And I was so confused. And they had this, like, th there was all sorts of romance going on. So, okay, okay. So Shaggy and Velma is now a thing. Okay. But why is Scooby-Doo accusing Shaggy of cheating? Like, this, this is starting to get quite creepy now. It's like, Daphne was in love with Fred. And I, Fred eventually caught on. He fell in love with Daphne. And then it's like Fred's. They have their parents there. Fred's. Pe Fred's dad is the mayor. Daphne's parents are like rich, and she's got like a few sisters and everything. And I was like, what? What is going on in this series? I didn't even care about the whole catching the monsters, the whole Mr. E, the evil parrot thing. I don't even know if he was evil. I stopped watching the show very quickly. And now we have Be Cool Scooby-Doo. Like, right. Why do they keep trying to change the character designs every single series? So what on earth is going on with the character designs in Be Cool Scooby-Doo? I don't even know what Be Cool Scooby-Doo is. I've never watched a single episode of it, nor have I seen it. I've never seen anything of it. Yeah, I should probably explain what was going on in that room. You had to hit that switch to activate the sprinklers that turned off the fire on the oven to grab the key. The oven hob, whatever it was. How it then turns back on again immediately, I'm not sure. But it does unfortunately also make the floor slippery. It's a very well hidden warp gate. Like, I really don't think the warp gate should be something that's hidden away. Anyway, in this area, we have Geronimo. Most pointless enemy in the entire game. Like we just we beat one then and we beat one just a little bit earlier. Those are the only two Geronimos in the entire game. Now 
they enemies do respawn every time you come back into an area. So if we come back here, those Geronimos will be there again. But those are the only two Geronimos in the entire game. And I really don't know what the point of including them here was. That's uh, another weird thing. So whenever you enter uh, Mind Your Manners Part 1, you get like this really spooky music. Like, dun, 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 dun. And again, that is the only time you ever hear it in this entire game. Like, it isn't part of the music in the actual level. Like, the music is, again, it's just that very peaceful Scooby Dooby Doo looking for you. Like, it isn't part of the music track. It just plays in this one section. It always just plays in this one section, and I don't know why. Anyway, those were those were ghosts. That's all they're known as, just ghosts. They are invincible. You cannot kill ghosts. Ghosts don't die. Those ones certainly don't. You can weirdly, you can trap them in bubbles. You can trap them in the bubble gun. And you can hit them. But like, as in they can hit you and they cause you to get hurt. For some reason the game gives you a close up on the creeper here. We've already seen him. Yes. Yes it is. And I'm guessing because they're immortal, which sounds weird because they're dead. But because they're invulnerable, uh, they really like to use ghosts in this game. Like, ghosts are used a lot in this game. They become a bit rarer in the coast area, but in terms of, like, Mystic Manor and a he and not so much the hedge maids, when you get to the graveyard, like, the ghosts are freaking everywhere. Because they're immortal. Because it was like, I think in the episode it was like it was a hologram, so it was able to go through the walls and everything. At the same time, it's like, did you guys really fall for this? It's, you, it's such an obvious moment where it's, yes, that is a blanket with two eye holes cut into it. It's like, how can you mistake that for an actual monster? Or an actual ghost in this case. There are a few where it's like, guys... This is so clearly not real. Yet you're still running in fear of it. There was an episode, um, it's the skeleton men. Like, there's three of them. They're so obviously disguised. Like, this this is not a skeleton, is it? You can see the outline of the costume. <laughs> it's like, why is this a thing? Never thought that I could say that Scooby-Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed gave them justice. They were still idiots. But uh, I love the skeleton men in that film. There's only two of them there. I think there was three in the actual episode. It actually did them some justice. I don't think I've ever seen the episode with the pterodactyl ghost, though. I know there is an episode with one in it, but I don't think I've ever seen it. Again, there's a couple of ghosts and monsters in this game where it's like, I don't know what episode it's from. Like I don't, I don't recognise it, but I thought that I'd seen every episode of What's New Scooby- uh, Well, yeah, of What's New Scooby-Doo, but of, like, the Scooby-Doo show and Scooby-Doo Where Are You? I thought I'd seen every episode, but apparently I have not. If it's from the new Scooby-Doo movies, then okay, because I always watch Scooby-Doo on Boomerang. And the only ones they tend to show- before, like, the likes of uh, Shaggy and Scooby-Doo started, the ones they always showed were- where are you? And the, Sco the Scooby-Doo show and what's new Scooby-Doo. Every now and then they would have like marathons. Like it was Scooby-Doo all day. For like the weekend or something. And that's when they would show the other series. Like occasionally you would get an episode of like Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo. But generally it was, it, that, it was during the marathons. That was the only time they ever showed like the new Scooby-Doo movies or the 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo. So that was the only time I could see them. So if I've missed any episodes of those, and I definitely have for the 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo, uh, that'd be why. Hey, this part's a pain. <laughs> then I realised, hang on, there's a box of Scooby Snacks over on the other side, and this, this camera angle right here! Right, this is stupid. The camera turns around to show you can go in there, even though I can clearly see the thing moving. And it's like, trying to, try to grab this Scooby Snack up here is fine, but trying to grab this box of Scooby Snacks is just around the other side. An absolute pain, because the camera then spins around again. And you got the thing going downwards. There we go. 
My god, that was a nightmare, and I swear. Firstly, there's a picture of uh, the ghost of Heidi here. There's also a picture of what appears to be uh, an ancestor to Velma. Which is where there's an ancestor to Velma, and there's one that kind of looks a little bit like Shaggy. It's questionable, that, but. It looks like. There's one that looks like Velma, which is really weird. Can't break there, there's a class on the bed. That's a very bouncy bed. How do you sleep on that? How do you even get into the bed, let alone, like, how do you sleep? I toss a lot. I turn around a lot when I'm sleeping. I'd be bouncing all over the place. Because that's clearly a very, very sensitive bed springs. Right, this one, you're kind of just going in a... Well, I, say, I say a circle. It's more of a square. Ghosts again. Really, clamor in the manner and mind your manners are the same, are like the same level. There isn't really anything different. I mean, again, the game considers Mystic Manor to be a level. Then you have the balconies, you have uh, the rooftops and stuff like that. So technically, they do count as the same level, but there isn't really anything that differentiates mind your manners with clamor in the manner. Whereas, like, there's two balcony... Actually, no, there's, like, four balcony levels. Because you have... You have all scares upstairs. You have... Um... Whatever the last... Whatever I end the pass on. I can't remember. All scares upstairs is the last one I go through in this part. And then I stop when I get to the next one. So it's, it's that one. It's all scares upstairs. Whatever the next one is. This is close. And then there's Panic in the Attic, Cower in the Tower counts as Panic in the Attic part one, and then you have like a dark and stormy night. Well, I think those two might actually count as the boosters. I can't remember. It's been two days, and that's all I need to forget. And there we go. This goes in a square. Don't go through that door. I have made that mistake, and then you have to go through the room again. So you have to make the full circuit again. <laughs> and there we go. There's actually no snack gate for this one. There isn't a snack gate for everything. But there's a snack gate for most of them. But it's all scares upstairs. A level filled to the brim with Scooby Snacks. In fact, I think... I want to say this one has the second highest number of Scooby Snacks in the entire game. It's like 380 something, I'm not sure. I think Scared Stiff at Skull Cliff is the one that has the most. It's like 394 snacks. It's like there's a lot of snacks to get. That poor headless spectre. There's that Velma stash. There's that Velma painting there. Spoilers game. I haven't seen the mastermind yet. I mean, granted, you don't know that that's the mastermind. Well, you might do. Because one thing that I skipped, one thing that I haven't showed off is that this game does actually have like a recreation of the original Scooby Doo Where Are You introduction bit. Only it uses like assets and graphics from the game. It says it's really good. The animation isn't great because the animation in the entire game isn't very good. But again, where did he come from? But I think that's also the last time we see him in the entire mansion. Like, I don't think he's in the secret passages. I don't think he's in any of the further levels. It's the only time. He's quite rare in the mansion. I think that's the only time we actually see him in the mansion. But that door takes you back to Clamor in the Manor. Like, there, was, there was a door right at the top of the first part. Like that guy. It's very, he looks a bit like Shaggy. I think he is eating a sandwich. Not that guy in the top hat. The one before it. There's that guy. I forget his name. <laughs> He's called the Witch Doctor in here, but I think he didn't have an actual name. But there was two. There was, like, there was the Witch Doctor, and there was like a statue or something, I believe. Same with Geronimo. There was also like a ghost for Geronimo. Like, on a horse. But yeah, the, the, the intro is, is pretty cool. It recreates everything. I didn't show it off just because I thought that the, the song, because it does reuse the original Scooby Doo Where Are You song, and I thought that might get copyrighted, so I didn't show it off. 
It is kind of one thing I did for the show. As much as I love the Scooby Doo Where Are You theme song, I actually always preferred the one that played in the second series. And that one never gets any love. Like, it's always the original. Which is a shame, because I as as much as I love that one, I do prefer the the one that played from the second series. It's like slightly higher pitched. I think there's multiple singers. Occasionally it didn't the the actual opening title sequence didn't always work. For one thing there was like Uh it would still show like Scooby running into the uh, Funland robot, Charlie the Funland robot. But like you see the Funland robot's legs, and then when Scooby looks up, oh, it's the Witch Doctor. It's like, why why didn't you just make the feet the Witch Doctor? It's because they used the clip from the episode. <laughs> But yeah, it's a great song. There's no denying that. But yeah, we can't get up these stairs because they turn into a slope. Need the plungers for those. And I always really love the one for Scooby Doo and the Cyber Chase. Probably because that's the Scooby Doo film I watched first. Zombie Island was second in the second. Zombie Island! Zombie Island scared the hell out of me when I first watched it absolutely terrified me which I hear is a common thing it is it's a surprisingly dark film it's like half of the zombies are like people are like tourists or they're either tourists or they were residents of the island then the pirates chase them into the river and then they get eaten by alligators it's like this is supposed to be a kids franchise and you got people that are again chased into the river by pirates and then eaten by alligators and then a pair of werewolf women then do some then like devour the pirates and then use voodoo to melt to, to melt the characters into zombies i have no idea what they're doing hey shaggy that film is freaking horrifying <laughs> It's got like the greatest song, one of the greatest songs in existence, but the, the film is freaking terrifying. I mean, truly, it's terror time again. That, is, that song is just amazing. But it's like, the film was terrifying. I it scared me the first time. I was able to watch it perfectly fine after that, which is odd because normally when a film scares me, I don't watch it again. When I was really, really young, The Return of Jafar terrified me. <laughs> It really did. Like the the final battle against Jafar terrified me when I was like really young, when I was like two or three, and I wouldn't. I refused to watch the film again for years. It was always just we just had the VHS on the shelf collecting dust. I'd watch Aladdin over and over, but uh, I wouldn't watch Return to Jafar. Eventually, after many many years, I rewatched. I was like, I love this. This is hilarious. I actually do like. I actually really do like the Return to Jafar. Which is rare among the Disney sequels, I know, but I also haven't watched most of the Disney sequels. Uh, I think that's the only time I can recall something like that happening there. Because I know I always used to run in fear in Jurassic Park 3. I already hit the switch! I used to run in fear of Jurassic Park 3 whenever the Spinosaurus would like roar at the plane. But other than that, that was the only time I ever did that. Like. I'd run away, I'd run out of the room every time that happens, but other than that, I, I'd watch Jurassic Park 3 perfectly fine, I love the film, I still do. I love the Spinosaurus. There I, I want to know what happens if Shaggy falls back down. <laughs> Does that platform go back, I thought that's probably what that switch at the end is for, I don't know. Well, Scares Upstairs is also a big level. It's got like four locations in it. It's no wonder it's got so many Scooby Snacks. And down he goes. It can at least give him a falling animation, like he's still walking as the platform goes down. Right, this part is a pain to collect all the Scooby Snacks in. Firstly, the creeper was able to make that flat, that wooden platform fall down, but the zombie doesn't make this one fall down. I mean, the creeper takes two hits. Maybe he's just heavier than the zombie. And it just took the weight of Scooby's to make that floating platform fall down. 
Listen, there was nothing keeping that platform up. I know Scooby Doo isn't exactly realistic, but that's that's all you could that's almost like you can just see like the platform is just floating in the air and then the entire mansion will fall down instead. Like like it's some kind of wily e. coyote skit. Like he just soars into the cliff. And then the entire back half of the cliff falls down. The, the tiny little bit the Roadrunner is standing on just just floats there. And that is always the reason why the Wily e. Coyote things were the greatest of the Looney Tunes. Looks <laughs> like Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck. Well, to an extent, Daffy Duck. He tends to get more annoying after a while. <laughs> or Foghorn Leghorn. <laughs> Nothing will ever beat Roadrunner and Wily e. Coyote. Yeah, see, so you, you kind of have to just keep dropping down. I, I am missing them. You can double jump when you bounce off of that trampoline. But I was just missing those Scooby Snacks. Right, let's try this again. There we go. No, don't go back down. So many witches. Witches that I can't hit. But when Scooby stops charging, his, his head is just high enough for him to take damage. The witches also laugh at it, it's like, <laughs> Smoke of darkness, make her vanish. Which is what happens if you defeat the witch, if she does disappear in a smoke of darkness. Don't look down, Scooby Doo, that was its name. But anyway, we are. This is where it gets very platform heavy. This is where we have the gargoyles. So we've got to try and get up there, which means that I need to try and remember how to get up there. <laughs> I did miss that on one playthrough. <laughs> anyway, we are going to end things off here. So I will see you guys next time.